What's up everyone, Justin here, back with a new Let's Talk About It. Mostly my Let's Talk About It shows are about old movies or current movies. I will admit, I don't go to the theaters, I don't really watch new movies that are released in theaters. I wait until they're on streaming services or I wait to rent them. That's just me. I don't like going to the theaters anymore I don't have the patience for it so uh, I saw enough movies on the big screen when I was a kid when I was a teenager when I was in my 20s I don't care to see anymore in the theaters so uh, anyways let's, this let's talk about it is of one of my favorite movies of all time to me I love this film. I love this movie to death. My favorite movie of all time. You could tell by what I'm wearing. My absolute favorite movie of all time. Ghostbusters. The original Ghostbusters from 1984. Which was a massive hit. Just a... Uh, international cultural hit took the world by storm sadly after ghostbusters uh they waited a long time to make a sequel they waited too long the sequel came out in 89 the original was 84 that's a long time to wait i don't know what took so damn long to make it it wasn't bad. I enjoy uh, parts. I, I enjoy a lot of Ghostbusters too. I really do. I think it's a good movie. It's a good Ghostbusters. It's an original story. It's different than uh, the original. There's a lot of good stuff in part two. The River of Slime and stuff like that. Some good stuff in it. But of course, nothing beats the original at all. Nothing. No movie to me is better. <laughs> I can't. I mean, I have other favorite movies, but Ghostbusters is absolutely my number one. Always will be. To me, it's one of the best movies of all time. One of the best comedies also of all time. If you want to... Call it a horror movie, kind of, because there's ghosts involved. I guess you could call it a supernatural, sci-fi, horror movie. I don't know, but to me it's a comedy. As a kid, I was obsessed with uh, Ghostbusters. I was obsessed with uh, two things growing up. Ghostbusters and pro wrestling. Obviously, you can tell from my... Gi I have a giant wrestling figures uh, collection and a wrestling memorabilia collection I have a big collection of uh, videos DVDs stuff like that but this is about Ghostbusters the original movie I'm gonna try to give you some uh, facts about it some fun facts maybe you haven't heard I did hear this from uh, Dan Aykroyd saying it in interviews. He said he wanted John Belushi in the original Ghostbusters. He wrote a part for him, but sadly he passed away before Ghostbusters could start shooting. He died, sadly, because of stupid drugs. So uh, kids, don't do drugs. It will ruin your life and you'll just die young. But uh, I got some good uh, facts. Seven weird, bizarre uh, facts. According to this website, seven, bu seven bizarre facts about Ghostbusters. So uh, here we go. Number seven. There was a Ghostbusters. Uh, before I start, let me get back to uh, John Belushi was supposed to be in the original that's obvious Dan Aykroyd would write them apart because they're part of Saturday Night Live. They're part of great movie, uh, Blues Brothers. 
and he wanted them in Ghostbusters. They were friends. He wanted to get his friend work, help him out. I think Dan Aykroyd even said he told John Belushi he was writing Ghostbusters and he wanted him to be in it and he said John Belushi got excited about it. But sadly, the guy couldn't kick his uh, drug addiction habit. So, and also I heard, I don't know where I heard this story. Might have been Dan Aykroyd or somebody. I'm not sure, but uh, Eddie Murphy. Instead of Ernie, Ernie Hudson getting the role of the uh, fourth Ghostbusters, I heard Eddie Murphy was going to be in Ghostbusters, actually. And Dan Aykroyd wanted Eddie Murphy in Ghostbusters, the original, but it didn't work out. That would have been a different movie, probably. Eddie Murphy, a fucking genius, comedic genius. Especially in the 80s. He was on Saturday Night Live. He was funny as hell. He was, uh, God, he had those great comedy specials. Eddie Murphy Raw, stuff like that. He's in Beverly Hills cop movies in the 80s. Eddie Murphy and Ghostbusters, that would have been really good, I think. Also, I heard John Candy was offered the role, I think. John Candy was offered uh, to be in Ghostbusters. I think he was going to play uh, Lewis, who Rick Moranis played. He was like a nerd in the movie, kind of. A nerdy guy. That was uh, clumsy as hell and stuff like that. Or awkward, clumsy, annoying, whatever. I guess John Candy is supposed to play that role. I don't know, but... Uh, I think Dan Aykroyd was trying to explain to him there's these like giant killer beast dogs that come to life and they come out of the closet in uh, Rick Moranis' apartment. Of course, everybody knows that scene. Legendary, funny as hell scene where uh, the dog or whatever you want to call it, a dog, a beast, just breaks through the closet door. That was funny as hell. And Rick Moranis uh, throws a jacket from a guest because he's having a party. He throws a jacket on the head of the dog. That was funny as hell, I thought. And Rick Moranis, the guy was so great in Ghostbusters. He absolutely brought it. He was damn good in it. Damn good. Rick Moranis was really great. In the original Ghostbusters, he was good in uh, Ghostbusters 2 also. They tried to get him. They tried to get Rick Moranis in Frozen Empire, the sequels, but he didn't, I don't know, he didn't want to be in it. He wanted more money. I don't fucking know. I don't care what he wanted. He has a right to not want to be in them. He did enough movies, I... I think he's happy being retired or whatever he does. But my God, Rick Moranis was really great in Ghostbusters. He he absolutely contributed uh, so much to the movie. He was uh, hilarious and a great character in it. Was uh the gate was he called the gatekeeper? I I forget, but. He is a key master, I believe, his character. But first, he's just a regular guy until the dogs attacked him and, like, put an evil spirit in him. Or a ghost uh, in him. Uh, and that's another great scene. Rick Moranis, outside of a fancy restaurant, like, all these rich, rich snobs eating dinner... He's getting attacked outside, screaming, banging on the glass, and they ignored him. They stopped eating, looked at him, and then they're like, oh, another crazy person in New York, let's go back to eating. And then he gets attacked, and they do nothing in the restaurant. That was pretty damn funny. Great scene. That whole scene was great. When he runs to the restaurant across the street, and the dog, uh, they didn't have many special effects. Back in the 80s, special effects were not very good yet. 
But my God, that beast, dog. Yeah, he looked phony running across the street, but I thought it was great. I thought it was hilarious how he looked. And they had great uh, special effects people working on Ghostbusters to create Slimer, the librarian ghost, the cab driver, dead uh, skeleton ghost. They just, uh, the beast, dog, great special effects people that worked on Ghostbusters to create the ghosts and the monsters. So, uh, yeah, let's get to the facts. So, yeah, this, before I get to the facts, I got so much to say about Ghostbusters. It's insane. I could talk about it all day long. I could talk about it for three hours, but I won't. I'd lose my voice if I did. I can't count. I lost count how many times I've watched Ghostbusters. It's come on cable a ton. It's on streaming services. It's like always on TV somewhere. It's always on a movie channel or something. Again, when I was a kid, I was obsessed. When I was a kid, four to five years old, I started renting Ghostbusters. Might have been even, I might have been like three or four when I first saw it. And I was obsessed with it. I didn't understand the whole movie and, like, all the dialogue, but I absolutely loved it as a kid. Uh, again, a very young kid. I was, like, three or four when I was, kept renting it over and over and over. I, well, not myself, but not my family rented. My aunt or my mom or my uncle would rent it for me, and I watched it, like, probably... At least 10 times or more, I rented it. Maybe more. I might have saw it like 50 times before I was like 10 years old. And as an adult, as a teenager, I still I love to watch it. It brings back great memories. Again, Ghostbusters, the original, brought me so much joy as a kid. Again, it's my favorite movie of all time. I just, I love it. Everything about it. Every scene. All the actors in it, there is not a bad performance. Every scene, there is not a scene or a part of the movie that is boring. Not to me. Everything is just about perfect. How they did it and made it. And how they shot it in New York City. That was great background and the special effects were uh, fucking awesome ahead of their time so again John Candy wanted to instead of having a dog beast he wanted like German shepherds he wanted to be the owner of during walk around with German shepherds like holding their leashes on uh, I don't get what he's thinking. That's hilarious. And I think Dan Aykroyd said he didn't understand the character or the part. He wanted to walk around with a German Shepherds on set in the movie. And Dan Aykroyd was like, no, you don't get it. You're not going to own German Shepherds. That was just hilarious. So no John Candy in Ghostbusters because... The guy didn't understand his part or something. I Or he didn't understand his character. I don't fucking know, but that's hilarious. He wanted to have German shepherds with him in his apartment or something. Or walking around and they turn into the beasts. So the hotline was real. I'm going to put this down. I got some Ghostbusters uh, stuff to share with you that I got. Giant... Blu-ray set, 4K. Uh, the thing is, like five DVDs or five uh, Blu-rays. So, again, these are seven bizarre facts. A hotline was real. There was a Ghostbusters hotline before the movie was put out. So uh, they released a commercial advertising their services. The three original members, Dan Aykroyd. 
Peter Venkman, Bill Murray, and uh, Egon Spangler, Harold Ramis. They appeared on television, and they put out a phone number. Everybody started calling it. It's 555-2368, Ghostbusters Hotline. Call it if you've seen any ghosts. That was pretty damn funny, and a lot of people called it. So, uh, during the film, Ivan Reitman, the great, late, great director, uh, ran the very same commercial in the movie where people were allowed to call in and have a pre, hear a pre-recorded message from Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. The number received about a thousand calls every hour, 24 hours a day for several weeks, uh, sending the line to no longer operate. So they shut it down. So number six, uh, Ghostbusters was not the original title of the movie. Again, it's uh, one of the greatest uh, movie titles, in my opinion, for a movie of all time. Ghostbusters. There was actually in a, another movie called Ghostbusters. I think it was in the 60s or 70s. I'm not sure. I forget who was in it, but there was a movie called Ghostbusters, I think. I'm pretty sure. But uh, Ghostbusters is a great, iconic, legendary title for the movie. Just like this symbol. Legendary logo symbol for a movie. I'm sure uh, this symbol has made Ghostbusters a lot, a lot, a lot of money in merchandise. They got this symbol and logo on video games, uh, everything. They had it on coffee mugs, video games, um, balloons, I mean, everything this symbol was on merchandise for. Action figures, uh, cartoons, the, the great legendary cartoon from the 80s, The Real Ghostbusters, which I loved. And I own uh, season one on DVD somewhere. 